So as we're working with modules, it's important that the, the actual modules themselves all fit together in a way that makes sense, not only for the greater project itself, uh, but that the modules fit together in a way that uh, you as a developer aren't forcing things uh, in you know any places where they really don't belong. Uh, as far as a module is concerned, uh, we call that cohesion. Uh, the more cohesive a, a module is uh, relative to the other modules uh, in the, the overall algorithm that we're developing, uh, the more cohesive it is, uh, the stronger that development usually is. Uh, I'm trying not to couch my examples here too greatly. Uh, it's just that uh, all development tries to be as uh, cohesive as possible. Uh, here in logical design we call it cohesion. Uh, when we're looking at databases and uh, just data itself we actually uh, call a similar process normalization. Um, and anybody who's worked on a database, anybody who's ever worked with data, uh, and anybody who's ever worked with uh, a large enough program can tell you uh, that even when you have attempted to be as cohesive or normal as possible, uh, there are still things that go wrong. Uh, so the, the first examples here are kind of in the things have gone wrong uh, basket. And as we keep going through uh, the examples as we get to sequential and functional cohesiveness, um, that's really what we should strive for. Uh, now, I mentioned previously uh, that there is no real metric, there's nothing solid, there's no formula, there's no uh, external algorithm we can use to, to really determine how functionally cohesive something is. Uh, so that, that really uh, comes back to your diligence when you are putting together your, uh, your modules and your overall programmatic design, um, that you have to be aware that these are things that you should be thinking of. Uh, so we're going to start with coincidental, uh, we're going to end with functional, uh, and along the way we're going to look at a couple of examples of, of you know, what those might actually look like. The first example we can see here on page 175 is coincidental cohesion. Uh, I'm not even going to refer to the, the code snippet here as an example anymore. It's really just, uh, I'm, I'm trying not to be crude, I suppose. Uh, it's literally garbage. Uh, it is what I suppose you could call an algorithm if we gave a chimpanzee a pen and said, yo, uh, try to form you know, some sort of cohesive sentence with it. No problem. Here we go. Um, the, the elements here are not in logical order. The elements here um, don't actually make sense. Uh, the line number five, uh, there's, there's no reason uh, for the set page count to one to be the fifth line here. Uh, logically, that would go first. Uh, so even here in the text, we find that it's difficult to, to show an example of coincidental cohesion. Um, you know, here, by this time, uh, none of your algorithms really show any of this uh, haphazard kind of um, setup. It's not something you would see. Oftentimes, uh, these are the result of arbitrary rules that a uh, an employee has to um, stick to. Um, oftentimes, even they're, they're malicious uh, when an employee uh, is angry at the system uh, that they have to work with, they are on their way out and they're just trying to give the middle finger to what's going on. Uh, they slap stuff together. Um, outside of that, you would not see what I would consider a good example any place of simple coincidental cohesion. Next on page 176, we have logical cohesion. Um, what I'll tell you is there's nothing actually wrong with logical cohesion. Uh, what logical cohesion suggests is that you have uh, essentially built a sequential um, algorithm that absolutely positively is, and I'm, I'm going to use the word logical here, that's actually where it comes from, is it's logically sound, um, but what it does not do is over the long term provide you with a bunch of really robust flexibility. The example we have here, um, as we are going through 
uh, that that case structure you'll notice that um, we are you know reading different portions of different files uh, all here inside of that case structure uh, and that's actually what makes this logical cohesion brittle um, if we were to change any of these, uh, if we were to change our interaction with the customer transaction record, if we were to change our interaction with the customer master record, um, so if we would change a, um, we would change a variable name, if we would change the order in which the customer master record is actually referenced, um, the, the brittle aspect here is that we would have to come through every line of code feasibly. Now, we could search for it, that much is true, um, but we would have to go through every line of code to determine where it is that we have made a reference to the customer transaction count, uh, and we would have to change that. We would have to go through and find every reference that we've made to a customer master record. Uh, if we go through later on and change a product SKU, so uh, an actual product number, that's something that companies do pretty regularly, um, we would then have to go through the customer master record potentially uh, to go through to make uh, those changes, update those records to reflect the new product number. Um, so inherently there's nothing wrong you know, at the time we develop and we deploy uh, something that is logically cohesive. Um, but in the long run, um, it, it really kind of opens you to a little bit of risk that if you change something, um, and I hate to use the word if you change, or the phrase rather, if you change something, you will change something. Um, that when you change something, you are indeed going to have to go digging through you know, a vast majority of your code to find out where all of those changes have actually been made. Next here on 176, we have temporal cohesion. Uh, this is um, essentially two things. Number one, um, something that is temporally cohesive is usually logically cohesive, uh, which means that the elements here inside of our module uh, fit together because they're logical. Uh, the next part is they're logical because they are relative and related due to the time at which it is that they are actually um, deployed or used. Um, Some place we can see this is with initialization. Uh, so when we start up a program we have to what's called initialize. We have to get everything ready. Um, so what do we do? We put all of our counters at zero or one. Uh, we go through and we get our accumulator set. We go through um, and we make sure that we get our page number set. We go through and we make sure uh, that we get all of our files read in. Um, that happens in the same order every time. Uh, your systems actually do this temporally co cohesive, um, logical uh, order of operations every time it is that your system boots up. Um, if you have a desktop, especially if you have an older desktop uh, where they, they don't hide from you the fact that it's booting up, um, what you'll actually see is it's called the POST, the Power On Self Test. That is a temporally cohesive um, essentially module. Uh, what it does is it fires up the fan first and it checks for that. It goes through and it uh, checks the temperature on your power supply. Okay, then comes next. Uh, then it goes through and it you know spins up the hard drive to make sure that that's there. Great, now comes next. Uh, it goes through and it checks for input. Those check out. Great, now comes the next piece. Um, and it does the same order of operations every time in exactly the same order uh, so that that module is both logically sound uh, and uh, it is very cohesive uh, because uh, that that grouping based on the time it is that they are actually executed uh, helps make sure that you are building stronger modules. Moving on, uh, 177 is procedural cohesion. Uh, essentially, the easiest way to look at this is your mainline algorithm. Uh, in your mainline, now that we've removed all of the, not all, uh, but now that we've removed much of the, the actual lines of code, now that we've actually removed much of uh, the, you know, the ins and outs, the inner workings of small uh, processes, um, we can actually get down to the procedure, the, the order of operations in which things uh, are going to occur. Uh, you'll notice that that sounds like it's both logical and temporal, uh, and you're right, uh, because, you know, hopefully by now we have had a logical sequence of events uh, that we have grouped together based on time, uh, 
Uh, and now we simply say, okay, great. Now let's put them in a mainline algorithm uh, and call it a day. Um, so uh, most of the good examples of um, you know projects and or uh, smaller algorithms that you've been putting together uh, actually to a large extent do have procedural uh, cohesion already. On uh, 178 we have communicational cohesion. Uh, essentially what this is suggesting is that um, the pieces uh, or the, the, the modular design that you have uh, are grouped together because they are working on the same piece of data uh, and be, or, or group of data. Uh, so don't think of piece of data uh, as if it's just you know one transaction or one receipt or anything um, but you know it's the same data set. Um, in order to do that uh, modules would have to communicate together so that we can do updates, we can do maintenance, we can do deletions, we can add new records, whatever the case might be. Um, and these modules therefore would need to communicate together. Um, once they're doing that, we have communicational cohesiveness. Next, here on 178 comes sequential cohesion. Um, what this essentially suggests is that um, as one of your modules is completing, the, the module that comes in sequence after it requires whatever the output was of the previous module. Uh, so essentially what we've got is essentially a blockchain. Um, so uh, when um, module number zero uh, starts, module number one is relying on the output from zero. When two starts, two is relying on the output from one uh, to continue and so on and so forth. Um, really the biggest issue here with sequential co cohesion uh, is that we're essentially saying that all modules rely on other modules to exist uh, because whatever the immediately uh, preceding module was had to complete something for the next one to go. Um, what I can tell you is that's that's not usually the case. Um, you know if we look at bigger pieces of um, logical design, even if we go back and look at things like our Google uh, user sign-on example, um, the Google user sign-on is not sequentially cohesive. Uh, there are aspects of that sign-on procedure that do not rely on other aspects to be complete. Um, so it's not like I'm only capable of signing on if I create a new user account. Uh, that would be a huge pain in the ass. Uh, so we, 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 we wouldn't expect that to have to be the case. Um, so sequential cohesion is nice and it's good uh, and it makes sense, I argue, it makes sense um, when you look at you know not not the program as a whole but a, a selection, that's a terrible word to use, um, but a you know a grouping of the modules that you have. Um, if one relies on another relies on another to get done, uh, what essentially that suggests to you is that you have done well in creating small single purpose modules that have one function and one function only uh, and that absolutely is a good thing um, but to essentially create an entire program where every modules success relies on the success of the module before it is a huge mistake and I would not suggest uh, that that's something you should strive for as we continue to 179, functional cohesion is absolutely something that we are doing presently. Uh, what this suggests is that we have um, a module that has a single purpose. Uh, we have a module that can easily be expressed um, with one or two verbs. Um, so the example we have here on 179 is calculate sales tax. Uh, it does not take a rocket scientist to figure out what this module is doing and that is frankly where we have lived all semester long uh, with the remaining weeks we have here um, as we build modules uh, and objects that rely on each other uh, that's absolutely something we're going to continue on with is these small single-purpose modules uh, that are um, 
completely reflective in their function of what their name suggests. So calculate sales tax, perfect. Um, add new customer record, perfect. Uh, initialize variable fields, perfect. Uh, and those are functionally cohesive. So there you have it from coincidental cohesion where it's just haphazard all the way down through functional cohesion uh, where we have small bite-sized modules uh, that can easily be expressed in their simplicity by using simple names uh, is really the, 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 the overall arc and measure of how it is that our algorithmic design and our modular design fit together.